Once upon a time, there lived two brothers, known as Akataku and Akatakmi. They lived in a small village called Beji. They always helped their parents at home and on the farm. But in the afternoons, when they had nothing to do, they often joined other children in the village to play with their catapults. One afternoon, as they were playing with the village children, they saw many beautiful birds on the trees near where they were playing, and they started firing at them with their catapults. But they could not get any of them. The birds kept hopping from one tree to another. And the boys kept following and firing at them each time they perched on different trees. Soon it was getting late. Darkness was about to descend, and the village children gave up hope of ever catching the birds. They had been trying to catch them since afternoon, but had not been successful. Defeated and dejected, they decided to go back home. But Akatakbi and Akatakbu refused to go back with them. They kept chasing a beautiful bed, left of all the beds that had been on the trees earlier. The rest had flown away except for that particular one. We can't give up now. We've come this far, said Akatakbu. Look at how beautiful the bed is. We've got to catch it and let the others know we are the greatest and the bravest boys in Ubeji village. You are right, big brother. Let's try to catch this one at least, replied the younger brother. Soon they were deep in the forest, and everywhere became suddenly dark. They could not find their way back home. They had gone too far. They started to cry. They grouped about in the dark searching for the right way home. But the more they grouped, the more they got lost in the forest. Suddenly they saw a tiny light moving towards them from a distance. They became happy. We may have found our way home after all, said Akataku, the elder of the two brothers. Wow! But when the light drew nearer, they saw that it was a very beautiful young lady carrying a lamp. Where are you both going at this time of the night, young boys? She asked. The two boys were happy to see such a lovely one in such a circumstance, and they replied with enthusiasm. We were chasing birds. We got lost in the forest, and now we don't know the way back home anymore. I see, replied the beautiful young lady. You must be really tired and hungry then, she asked. Yes, we are really tired and hungry. And besides, our parents must be very worried by now, Akatakbo replied, drawing his younger brother closer to his side. But you can see it's very dark now. You have to follow me home to eat and rest. Tomorrow morning, you can find your way back home, advised the young lady. So with that, they followed her further until they got to an old beautiful house. Standing alone in the forest, she opened the door and invited them in. They entered the house and she shut the door. Instantly, the beautiful lady transformed into an old witch. What? The boys exclaimed in surprise. So you are, you are you are an old witch? The old witch laughed and said, I was the beautiful bird you wanted to kill, but now I've caught you. You both, and you can't escape anymore. Ha, 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 ha. The witch began to dance and say, I'll kill you, cook you, and feed my lovely children with your flesh. Oh, cried Akatubi. Please don't kill us. Her parents will kill themselves if they find out. That remains to be seen, boys, said the old witch. Ha, 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 ha. She laughed aloud. Ha, 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 ha. With that, she left the boys and went into another room. She returned shortly with pumpkins and gave them 
to eat. Eat up, you must be really hungry, she said and left. Akatako looked at his younger brother and said, don't eat, she will kill us if we do. But we are hungry and I can't stay without food, I will eat it. After much talking to his younger brother who refused to leave the food alone, Akatako gave up and watched him finish the food hungrily. The old witch came back and showed them to her room. She spread a black mat on the floor and told them to lie on it and then covered them with a black cloth. She brought out another mat, this time a white one, and spread it on the floor on the, at the opposite side. She put her two children to lie on it and covered them with a white cloth. She then left the room. When everywhere was quiet, they were all fast asleep. Akitaku got up, woke up his brother, and together they carried the old witch children to the black mat. They took the black cloth and covered them with it. They then lay on the white mat and covered themselves with the white cloth. Shortly, the old witch tiptoed into the room with a sharp knife and stabbed the two children on the black mat covered with black cloth to death, thinking they were the boys she had caught. She took them to the backyard to skin them for her meal. Akatako woke his brother and together they tiptoed out through the open back door. They started running away from the house, struggling to, the, to find their way out of the forest in the dark. When the old witch removed the black cloth, she was astonished to see that it was her children she had killed. Quickly, she ran into the room in search of the boys, but they were nowhere to be found. She knew immediately that they had escaped. She brought out a powerful arrow made of iron, a long broom, and a magic wand, and came out of the hall and started chanting their names. Akatakbu, Akatakbi, Akatakbu, Akatakbi. Immediately, the younger one, Akatakbi, dropped flat on the ground and died. But Akatakbu did not die because he did not eat the old witch uh, pumpkin. As soon as Akatakbi dropped dead, Akatakbi also dropped down, pretending to be dead. The old witch flew into the place with her broomstick and was very happy to see the boys on the ground. She put her materials down and started to dance with joy. While she danced, Akatakbi watched and listened as she took the magic wand and chanted something that immediately woke Akatakbi. Akatakbi also pretended to wake up. The two boys saw the old witch was dancing and started running again. They had gone far when the old woman, old witch, realized this again and chanted their names. And Akatakwe dropped down again, dead. Akatakwe also pretended to be dead and dropped down. The witch flew to where they were again and started dancing. She danced forward this time, promising herself not to wake them up, but to carry their dead bodies so that she will not run, they will not run away again. But Akatakbu had already seen how she, she woke Akatakbu up with her magic wand. So when the old witch went in search of what to use in carrying the boys back home, Akatakbu took his, her magic wand and started chanting as the old witch had done. Started chanting, chanting, thank. So after chanting for some time, Akatakbu woke up. Akatakbu packed up the entire witch's which materials held his brother firmly in his arms and ordered the broom to take them back to big village. While they were almost at the village, the witch came back to the spot she had left them and found them gone. With her powers, she started to cry. She commanded her powers to come back to her and work for her, but they had all been seized by the boys. The boys landed in their village to the joy of their parents and the entire village. They told everyone in the village what had happened the previous day and their experiences, and they handed over the old witch power to the village elders. The next day, the elders took the materials to the river and threw them into the water. That is why, to this day, the river tide rises and falls at times of the day. That's the end of the story. Thank you.